45 days after the end of every financial quarter, we get flooded with SEC filings from institutional investors. Any money manager with a portfolio exceeding $100 million in assets is required to fill out a 13F filing that tells us about the stock market investments in their portfolio. And for small investors like us, it gives us an insight into what institutional investors like Warren Buffett and Michael Burry have been buying during the latest quarter. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at the top five stock picks from a curated list of wildly successful investors. Investors. First, we're going to discuss the five stocks that were purchased by the most super investors during the latest quarter. And then on top of that, later in the video, I'm going to talk about the top five holdings of super investors, regardless of whether they actually added to those positions or initiated those positions in the latest quarter. Number five on the list of the top stocks picked by super investors during the latest quarter is Salesforce. Salesforce is a cloud-based software company that primarily produces CRM software for businesses and enterprises. CRM is customer relationship management and includes customer service, marketing automation, analytics, and more. These kinds of businesses are particularly attractive to long-term value investors because of the sticky nature of their products or services. Stickiness, or more commonly known as a switching cost mode, is where a service is costly or difficult to switch away from. And while this does apply to individual consumers and small businesses, it particularly applies to businesses that serve enterprises because it can be very, very costly for those businesses to go through a transition of changing uh, a core software that they use for thousands of their employees, as well as the opportunity cost and the inefficiency costs that are related with uh, their employees having to learn how to use uh, a new piece of software. This kind of economic mode essentially provides a barrier that prevents customers from leaving that service and switching away to a competing product, even or a competing service, even if that service is similar and is cheaper. In Salesforce case, they boast a churn rate of just 9% annually, which essentially means they retain 91% of their customers over an entire year. And it means on a month by month basis, which is where retention is typically viewed, they retain 99% of customers over a 30 day period. Salesforce stock is down 50% since its November 2021 high. The company has continued to grow revenue almost every quarter, but profits have declined after exploding in 2020. And this short term turbulence in Salesforce's business and stock price has led to a number of super investors either adding to their positions or initiating positions in Salesforce. Josh Tarasoff, Bill Nigren, and Chuck Ager are three of the super investors in the list who own Salesforce. And in total, nine guru investors added to or initiated positions in Salesforce during the quarter, with only two reducing their positions slightly. Number four of the top five stock picks of super investors is Alphabet. Alphabet is the largest advertising company in the world, and it's achieved this by creating some of the biggest free-to-use platforms and applications in the world, including Google Search, YouTube, Android Maps, Drive, and much more. Alphabet has a number of competitive advantages that make it attractive and likely a sustainable business over time, but one of the biggest and most notable is their network effect. A network effect is where a service gets better the more people use it, and it creates this kind of flywheel where more people use the service, therefore it gets better, and therefore that attracts more people to use it, and therefore it gets better, and it creates this flywheel that ultimately leads to, in most cases, a winner-takes-all market. One example of this is Google Search. Why on earth would anybody go and use the second best search engine? You're always going to use the best search engine and the result of that means that more people are using Google search, feeding their algorithm and increasing the effectiveness of Google search relative to other search engines, further increasing and solidifying that winner takes all market. And this doesn't just apply to Google search, it also applies to other parts of their business such as YouTube. YouTube, it's a little bit more complicated. Viewers watch on YouTube that attracts advertisers who want to get in front of those users. And that of course brings more money to the platform which attracts more content creators like myself who want to create more content and generate generate advertiser revenue. And by creating more content, we increase the value of the platform, which again, attracts more viewers onto the platform. Network effects are one of the most powerful competitive advantages because typically the only way that a competitor with an inferior product or service can compete is by lowering their prices. But if the largest uh, winner takes all service like Google search or YouTube is available for free, then essentially competing services that are inferior have to pay people to use their platforms. And we've kind of seen how poorly that's worked out in the past. Things like you, uh, Facebook Gaming and Mixer, the streaming platform, have tried to pay creators to uh, stream or, or create content exclusively on those platforms. And still, people tend to gravitate towards the best service, which for video content has been YouTube. The stock is down about 35% since last year. And this is mostly due to weakening advertiser market due to inflation. Essentially, many businesses are feeling the pinch of inflation and as a result, are cutting their advertiser budgets first. But regardless, the stock has 
been very attractive to super investors this quarter. 11 investors have added to their positions this quarter, including Josh Tarasov, Tom Gaynor, and Terry Smith. But unlike Salesforce, there were quite a few investors who trimmed their position during the quarter as well. So there's kind of less of a consensus on Alphabet than there is with Salesforce. Before I share the top three stocks that Smart Money have been buying in the latest quarter, I wanna talk about today's sponsor of this video, as well as give some insight in how I use today's sponsor in order to quickly analyze some of the companies that Smart Money has been buying. I never just blindly copy super investors, but I do like to look at what they're buying as potentially ideas for my portfolio. If an investor I respect, such as Charlie Munger, is investing in a new stock, I head over to Ticker and you can use my link in the description below to let Ticker know that I sent you. I search up the stock and quickly apply some basic checks, such as wanting to see growing revenue, earnings per share, equity, and free cash flow. I'm looking for companies with a current ratio above one and a debt to equity ratio below one. And of course, most critical, a business that consistently generates high returns on capital. Ticker's fantastic interface makes it really easy to quickly assess a company and decide whether I want to eliminate it and not look at it further, or whether I want to shortlist it and come back and do deeper research. And I can actually do some of that deeper research on Ticker, such as looking at valuation ratios, analyst expectations, and access conference calls and other company filings. And this is just a drop in the bucket of the many features available on Ticker, which include the best global stock screener I've ever used and the ability to track smart money portfolios. If you use my link down in the description below or head over to hamishhotter.com forward slash ticker, then you'll be able to get more than 40% off when you sign up to an annual subscription, or you can also use that link to sign up to their free plan, which you can use and try for as long as you want. Number three on today's list is Amazon. Amazon is the largest e-commerce business in the world with many other major businesses, including the largest cloud services business in the world, AWS, and other businesses such as Amazon Prime Video. Similar to Alphabet, Amazon likely has a number of different competitive advantages, particularly in their different businesses. However, in my view, the most critical to the growth of Amazon over time has been scaled efficiencies shared. Firstly, scale efficiencies is where as a business scales and increases the volume of units that they're selling, they're able to reduce their cost per unit and essentially generate more return on capital or higher return on capital than their competitors. And this alone is a powerful competitive advantage, but when it's combined with one other strategy, it becomes absolutely unbeatable. And that strategy is to, instead of taking that additional economic benefit for themselves or for the shareholders, they deliver it to customers in the form of lower prices. And this essentially creates a flywheel similar to a network effect where lower prices attract more customers that increases the volume of the business, therefore lowering their cost per unit and allowing Amazon to lower their prices even further, kind of accelerating the rate at which they're lowering the prices of products that are available uh, at other businesses, at other smaller competitors, but at a far higher price. Amazon stock is down 50% from its peak last year. And this is likely at least in part the result of short-term inflationary pressures, which have hurt their profit margins, even though revenues have continued to grow. Regardless, 12 super investors added to or initiated positions in Amazon during the quarter, while eight reduced their positions. Number two on today's list is Microsoft. Microsoft is a massive global technology company with businesses in computer software, consumer electronics, computers, and cloud computing services. And Microsoft likely benefits from a few of the advantages that we've already spoken about today. Their PC operating system likely has a network effect. They likely benefit from a switching cost in regards to some of their productivity and workspace tools such as Office, Outlook, and Teams. And they may even benefit from some scale efficiencies in regards to their hardware sales. Microsoft stock is down almost 30% this year, which is a lot, but it's still quite a bit less than some of the names we've spoken about today. And part of that is likely due to the fact that their profits really haven't declined in the past year, which demonstrates that they've been fairly resilient when it comes to inflation. And there's a lot of names buying Microsoft this quarter, 13 different super investors added to their positions, including the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Chris Home, and Viking Global. Although we should note that most of these changes are pretty minor. And again, there's quite a few investors actually trimming their position of Microsoft as well. Lastly, number one on today's list is Meta Platforms. Meta Platforms is the second largest advertising company in the world, which has achieved this through building and acquiring social media platforms such as Facebook, Messenger, Instagram, and WhatsApp. Meta, of course, is also leading the way in virtual and augmented reality and the related softwares. Meta's major competitive advantages come from its social platforms. They boast billions of daily active users across multiple platforms. And similar to YouTube, these platforms benefit from a network effect. For example, when it comes to messaging and communicating online, people don't want to be jumping between different apps to communicate, generally speaking. So they tend to gravitate to the one where they can communicate with most of their friends and family, where they can access the most people on one single platform. And that also leads to that platform becoming more valuable to their 
their friends and family who are again likely to use that platform because most of their friends and family are available on that platform. And the same kind of logic can be applied to both Facebook and also Instagram. But as Meta pivots to spending tens of billions of dollars in the pursuit of virtual and augmented reality, there's been quite a lot of different of difference of opinion in the investing space around where Meta is heading in the future. And as a result, the stock is down 70% since last year, including a catastrophic 50% decline, which happened just across a few months this year. And at the same time, super investors have been loading up. This quarter, 15 super investors added to their Meta position, including Sequoia, Thomas Gaynor, and Robert Vinal. Although again, most of these changes have been relatively small. But those top five stocks just represent the stocks that have been bought in the last quarter. And as we saw, most of them were relatively minor changes. So let's take a look at the top five stocks that smart money own, regardless of whether they bought or added to them in the last quarter. And well, this list looks pretty familiar. Number five, we have Amazon. Number four, we have Meta. Number three is Microsoft. Number two is Alphabet Class C shares. And number one, Alphabet class A shares. In other words, the biggest stocks that smart money own are the same ones that they've been adding to in the last quarter. And this shouldn't really be overly surprising because assuming that the fundamentals of these businesses haven't changed all that much in the last three months, the prices for these businesses to invest in these businesses has just gotten cheaper in the last three months. So it makes sense that they would want to add to their positions. Interestingly, I use many of the same principles as these smart money managers when assessing companies, but I don't own any of these five companies in my portfolio. And that's simply Simply because there is such a wide array of companies and I like to focus on areas that I deeply understand and that often differs from even these smart money managers. So the lesson in that is that while it's a great idea to farm ideas from these investors, ultimately you want to come up and do your own research and come up with your own opinion. A quick reminder to check out Ticker by heading to hamishhotter.com forward slash Ticker and get up to 40% off an annual subscription if you sign up or just check out their free plan. Either way, let Ticker know that I sent you by using that link down in the description below.